from hello. My name is Douglas Harrington. Uh, I am an admissions counselor here for Binghamton University, State University of New York. I am a Binghamton alum. I did graduate in 2016 and 2017 with both my bachelor's and master's respectively in business administration. And I have been working for the university full time since then. Um, so this is my fourth year as a counselor. I've absolutely loved it here. Binghamton is certainly a, a, a home for me now. Um, I've moved here full time, so it's certainly a home for me. And it certainly was as a student as well. So super excited to join you um, this evening to talk a little bit about the Watson College um, and show where exactly our students go to with the help of our Watson Career Connections Center, which we'll get to in just a second. But before I turn it over to my good friend, Kimberly, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Marlo, just for a quick introduction um, as well. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Marlo Cohen. I am the Long Island Admissions Counselor. I, too, am an alumni. A lot of alumni come back and work here. But yeah, I graduated back in 1990, a long time ago. Um, and I have to say a lot has changed, but I always say it's gotten exponentially better. It's unbelievable how it is the same feeling of feeling at home here. So many great things to say, but exponentially, all of our academic programs, all of our buildings, all of the research, everything has just gotten that much better. And we're excited to share uh, all the stuff about Watson with you this evening. Uh, we thank you for taking time for joining us. During this, I'm going to be on the back end answering questions that might come in in the Q&A. Doug, if you want to fill them in a little bit more about how that works. And uh, we'll be back there just to support you and answer those questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marlo. Yes, the chat functionality is turned off for you. So um, if you do have any questions throughout the presentation or anything like that, um, please feel free to put them in the Q&A functionality at the bottom of your screen, and we'll either um, type them out um, to answer your questions or we'll uh, answer them live. Um, so please feel free to utilize that if you do have any questions throughout the presentation. And with that, I would love to turn it over to Kimberly for an introduction. Okay, that sounds great. So hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, my name is Kimberly Coleman, and I am the Director of Watson Current Alumni Connections, of course, at the Watson College of Engineering and Applied Science. Uh, here today, I'm here to talk to you about the Watson Current Alumni Connections Office and really all the outcomes that our engineering students and our computer science students have. Um, I'm also an alum of Binghamton University, so we have a lot of alumni here. Um, I graduated in 2012 with my bachelor's degree and then 2014 with my master's degree. Um, I worked at a different institution in Pennsylvania, and then I loved Binghamton so much I wanted to come back. Um, and so I worked a little bit at the School of Pharmacy, and now I'm here at the Watson College of Engineering. So very happy to be here speaking with all of you today, and hopefully we'll get to see some of your faces in the fall too. So I think I will kick it off. I'm going to share my screen, and we'll get started with the presentation. And again, please feel free. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to interrupt me. Use the chat feature. Uh, happy to answer any questions that you might have. All right. Okay, so here we are talking, of course, about the College of Engineering and Applied Science, and specifically the Watson Current Alumni Connections Office. And we are here because we are essentially the Career Services Center, as well as the Alumni Connections piece for you. Um, our office is here uh, within the Watson College specifically, and we're geared toward you um, in Watson Engineering and Computer Science students only. We don't service any of the other students on campus. Um, and we're here to kind of provide you with three different things. So the first one I would say is certainly employment resources, right? We want to make sure that you get a great job as soon as you graduate. And so we're here to help you get started pursuing any opportunities. That starts, of course, with internships during your freshman, sophomore, junior year. Um, and then, of course, it will transition into jobs. The second one would be different professional development skills that we can help you with. So that we do lots of different workshops, presentations. We bring in alumni to help you do that. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, and then the last one is that we want you to build connections. And so there's a statistic out there that says that 80% of students and, and individuals who are even older after they've graduated get their jobs based on some sort of networking and 80% of them do that. And so we really strongly believe that from day one, you really need to start building your networks. That way you can get those jobs that you really desire. All right, and so our office, like I said, the first thing that we do is we want to provide you with resources. And so starting during your freshman year, our office staff go into your classes and we help you build that first resume. We also will help you with any cover letters that you have to do for different job applications. We can assist you with the kind of the first steps of networking and building those connections, both with employers, with alumni, with your colleagues. Like I said before, when it's time for you to get started thinking about your internship, what you can do as soon as your freshman year, we can help you with that search and help you find things that really align with your interests. 
We really like to take a personalized approach with all these types of things. We are open every day from 8.30 until the evening hours, and we want to meet one-on-one -on -one with students to help you through these types of things. Um, we even have an upload form, for example, where if you have a resume, a personal statement, you maybe have a question for, for a professor and you don't really know how to quite navigate how to email a professional email, for example, you upload either that form or that question to a Dropbox, and we will give that a professional review within 24 hours. And so that's something that's really nice that students appreciate. And we'll do that even after you graduate when you're an alum. So later on down the line, you might be looking to switch jobs, connect with us, and we still provide our resources to you. All right, so the next thing that we help you with is professional development. So this could be anything from different workshops that we host that might vary from LinkedIn workshops and networking, um, how to be an effective interviewer, for example, how to have a really productive summer break, um, all of those sorts of things. And so we have panel events, we have speaker events, tech talks where we have individuals from industry come back and talk to the students and really network with you and get to know you and give you advice, and also alumni who do that as well. We also offer lots of different certifications, badges, conference funding, because we want you to go out there, develop those skills, both technical skills, of course, as engineers and computer scientists, and also just interpersonal skills through getting involved with one another. And so interpersonal skills are huge. That's a huge thing that employers are looking for. And so one thing that we really encourage you from day one is to get involved with our student organizations. So we do have over 30 different organizations within Watson College itself. Uh, those student organizations often are chapters of national associations. And so these are things that can help you get jobs after graduation, will help you really build your network. Those students travel to those conferences, really gain some additional skills there. And also when you're involved in student organizations, you get additional project experience, you can put on your resume, you can talk about that during interviews. And so there's a lot of benefits that really are associated with getting involved in student organizations. And we really encourage that. And most of our students do end up getting involved in student organizations, which is great. All right, and of course, the last thing, like I said, we want you to build those connections and we help you to do that from day one. So Watson College has over 15,000 alumni, which is a huge alumni database, and they are very good at giving back to our current students. And so we try to help you leverage those opportunities with alumni who are always reaching out to us with internship opportunities, job opportunities to hire those Watson students. Uh, some ways that we do that are different networking events that we have. So just one example is that we have a huge um, a huge event called Engineers Week. And so this is a national event and we have a whole week dedicated to engineers and computer scientists. There we do networking nights, mingling nights. We have industry come back on campus working with the students. There's lots of different ways to get involved with Engineers Week. Another thing that we love to do is have industry visits. And so as you can see here on the screen, uh, we do those in New York City, Washington DC, Silicon Valley, Boston. And so we'll take students and you can do this in any one of your four, uh, four years as an undergraduate, or even if you go on to get your master's, for example, you sign up and you go physically to these locations and meet with the industry leaders. They'll get a tour of the companies, meet one-on-one -on -one with the vice presidents, the recruiters, the hiring staff. And so these are really good ways for you to make connections and really land those jobs and internships. Another thing that we do is we offer many different employer info sessions. And so minimum of three times a month to almost 10 times a month, we'll have industry partners who are different employers and different um, in different subsets of the of different um, companies, for example, and they'll come back and they'll talk to our students. And so just this past year, you know, we're doing primarily virtual info sessions. We've had lots of different employers come. So just last month, for example, we had Tesla come. They gave an info session to our students, talked a little bit about their company, what they like to see in, in people who are really applying in different candidates. Um, they talked about the different skills that they're really looking for in those top level candidates. And then they said, okay, Binghamton Watson students, we're going to give you a separate way to apply that others don't even see on our website. And so those individuals that were there were the recruiting managers, the hiring managers. And so they really put our students to the top of the list who attended that session, asked intelligent questions, and really seemed interested in the company. So things like that we do all the time for our students. Um, and of course, we'd continue to do that moving forward as well. We also have a really interesting feature called the Mentor Match Program. 
And so that is where we have Watson alumni, successful alumni who have logged in and created a profile on this Mentor Match platform. Um, Mentor Match is kind of like a dating app, but it's for professional reasons. And so you'll go in, you'll create a profile based on kind of where you want to go when you graduate, and you'll automatically get matched up with these alumni. From there, the students will reach out to the alumni and just get to know them a little bit. You can conduct some informational interviews, learn a little bit about how they got to where they are today. And then those alumni often have open jobs at their companies, really want to see those students who are connected with them succeed. So again, this is just another way of networking and building more connections. All right, and so all of those things that we do very regularly in our office for our Watson students are for the ultimate goal of, of course, giving you successful outcomes upon graduation. So our students often, they go straight into industry, go right into the job market and get a job upon graduation. And some of our students decide to go to grad school as well. And so where do our Watson students go after graduation? Basically, they go to all of these companies that, see, that you see here on this screen. It's a wide variety of places that our students go. And most of these, like I said, we actively work and we connect with these individual companies. They come, they do presentations, they visit campus, we get them connected with our students and we love doing that. And then our other you know, half of students are not quite half, but a lot of them decide to go to grad school as well. And so I'm sure that you've heard about the four plus one program. Some students just stay for one extra year to stay on at Binghamton and get their master's. Some students go elsewhere as well. Um, for those students who do decide to go on to their graduate program, on um, the top three that we had from our May 2020 graduating class were Boston University, Cornell University, and then of course, the vast majority go to Binghamton. But the others that you see here on the screen, those are some institutions that our students went to as well. All right, and so you might be wondering how many students actually go on to pursue further education. Basically, everyone comes in, they get their bachelor's, and then you're more than welcome to go out and begin work in industry. It kind of depends on the different section or the different department or industry that you want to pursue. Um, if you're thinking of biomedical engineering, that's probably the one department where our students typically um, think a little bit more about going and getting further education, whether that be their master's or PhD, but you don't necessarily have to. And then also computer science, those students typically don't go on and pursue additional degrees and they just go right into employment after. All right, and so I pulled together this little graphic to kind of show you exactly where our students go after graduation. And this is based on our May 2020 graduating class, so the graduating class last year. And so based on the information that we were able to collect and gather, 90% of our students were placed within six months of graduation. And so being placed means that they either went on to pursue graduate school, they gained employment, or they went into the military, for example. And so we're really happy with this number, especially given the pandemic, you know, it's been a hard year with employment, but Watson students are in high demand. Engineers and computer scientists haven't been affected by the pandemic as much, um, which is great news for all of you. And so that number is definitely in line with the previous years as well. The average starting salary for our students last year when they graduated was $72,873 annually. And so again, as you see, you know, going into engineering computer science is a very lucrative field, which is awesome. Um, and you know, coming from Binghamton, the tuition is very reasonable. And so I think that's one thing that definitely sets Binghamton apart from some other institutions is that you're really getting a great education, a top-notch education for a very affordable price. And at the same time, you're getting a great starting salary starting right after you graduate. And so hopefully you can you know, pay back those minimal loans that you may have and really start yourself out on a great foot moving forward. And then our top employers, you can see the top employers of our undergraduate students who graduated from Watson. Um, of course, Lockheed, IBM, BAE, those are companies that we work with all the time. And so they always hire a lot of our students. Some other ones that you see here on the screen are Capital One, Amazon, we had a lot of students go and work with, um, Northwell Health, Raymond Corporation, Morgan Stanley, all these are companies that were um, hiring a lot last year and we're very interested in hiring Binghamton students. As far as the further education goes, the students who intended to go and get their graduate degree, 99% of them were able to successfully do that, which we thought was a great number as well. And then most of our students do end up staying in the United States after they graduate, but there are some students who decide to go and either study abroad or gain employment abroad. And so about 4% of our students go abroad after that. 
And this is something that I figured I'd post in the chat for you. This shows a little bit more of our outcomes data if you're interested. And this is put together by the Fleischmann Center, who is essentially our career services or career development center. And this shows exactly where our Watson graduates go after they graduate. And so I'll put this in the chat, like I said, but basically you go in and you can just select a program. Um, so you can choose, we'll say computer science, select, then you can scroll down and then you'll see exactly what the average starting salary is for that particular major. Um, you can see the program where the students are going after they graduate. So where are they employed? The position title, so what type of positions do the students get? How many of them do pursue further education? And where do they complete an internship? So I think this would be great information for you if you're thinking about different departments to pursue. Uh, you can definitely kind of look into this feature a little bit and I'll send this out in the chat right now. Well, I'm sorry, I don't think I'm able to do the chat since we're in a webinar. Okay, we'll make sure that you get this link after the session. I can certainly go ahead and post it in the chat for you. Okay, perfect, thanks, Doug. All right, so everybody saw the, the outcomes that we have at the Watson College, and we're all here to help you. Your faculty is here to help you. We have an open door policy, uh, right now an open Zoom policy, because we want to help you be successful when you graduate. Within the Watson Career and Alumni Connections Office, this is the staff that we have. We have four full-time professional staff and we're actually working on hiring one more. And then we also have different student assistants who represent each department within Watson. So maybe someday you'll be hired as one of those student assistants. Uh, they're very professional, very well-trained and they're very helpful as well. We are here to help you anytime, even if you're kind of deciding, do I want to pursue Binghamton? Do I want to go to the Watson College or don't I? We're happy to talk through things with you if you'd like to do that with us. Feel free to reach out to us anytime. Like I said before, our office hours, we go into the evening. And if you ever have a question, even outside of our office hours, more than happy to help you. We meet with students regularly, either very early in the morning, if they maybe have a full-time job if they're balancing with school, and I even meet with students into the evening. So if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. All right, and so we do a ton of different events every semester. Like I said, we have the info sessions with employers, we have professional development events, we have lots of events with our alumni to connect to you. And so these are just some examples of things we've done over the past couple of weeks that the students have really loved. But really, our students are really engaged with us. We love to do outreach, and we just want you to be successful. So I think one thing that's really great about our office and about Watson College is that we really do try to give a personalized approach to students. And so we do lots of different small sessions. We do one-on-one -on -one meetings with students. We're here to help you every step of the way. And like I said, if you have any questions now or in the future, please don't hesitate to reach out. And I'd love to have the opportunity to connect with you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that great presentation, Kim. Um, I got my MBA with Matt Fedorchak and he's a, he's a good guy. So oh, I always like, I always like to see his face up there. So, um, so thank you so much again for that presentation. So, uh, as I mentioned, um, we do have a few, uh, questions that, um, pre-selected questions that uh, I've identified that I, you know, moving into the Q and A portion. Um, and we do have some that are, that are coming in as well that, um, are good to be answered live as well, but, you know, being an alum and also that it was nice that you, you have worked at another institution um, before down, down as an institution in Pennsylvania, you know, with all of your experiences and everything like that, what do you think is some things that does, that helps being set Binghamton apart um, and the Watson College apart from maybe some other schools um, in your opinion? Yeah, sure. I think, you know, that's a good question. Um, obviously, I love Binghamton. You know, I came back to work at Binghamton forever, probably, uh, since I loved my experience so much as a student. Um, and so I think there's just something about campus that the vibe is just a really nice one to be a part of. Um, today, it was 75 degrees on campus. Everybody was outside. People were passing by the Starbucks truck, grabbing a nice coffee, just walking around with friends, throwing the Frisbee. It was just such a nice environment. Um, and just overall, I think that people are extremely welcoming, genuine, open-minded. Um, so I think the culture of Binghamton is really great. Um, and like I said before, I think we have a really personalized approach on campus. Uh, we regularly sit down with students and, you know, can help them from anything from, you know, I have no idea where to, how to even write an, an 
how to write an email to my professor to, hey, I have three job offers and I have no idea how to navigate this. And so, you know, we sit down with students and we deal with those sorts of things every single day and we're happy to do it. Um, I would say that another thing that's really nice about the Watson College is that you do have this career services office at your disposal for, you know, the rest of your life if you'd like to use it. That's something that I think not all colleges have. Typically, there is one sort of career development center for all of the campus students from all different majors. And so it's really nice that we do take this personalized approach with our engineering computer science students to make sure that you're successful, not only upon graduation, but far out into your career as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I definitely agree. You know, I, it, it is not often I think that you see a lot of colleges having multiple career services centers. They generally have one. Um, here at Binghamton, we not only have our Fleischmann Center, we have our Watson um, Career Connection Center. Our School of Management has one. So we do have several different uh, career connection centers on campus, which is pretty nice to see. Yeah, definitely. And I think another thing now that, you know, when we just start talking a bit is I think they're always trying to aim for continuous improvement, too. And I think that's one thing that's really important that maybe not all schools are always thinking about. But I know, you know, even just during the pandemic, we've had so many different surveys go out to students where we want to hear students feedback to make sure that they're engaged in the classroom and really are having a good online education um, in a good, you know, online learning environment and making sure that we're always improving upon that, training our faculty, training our staff, changing the ways that we're doing things. Um, Watson College had a huge initiative over the winter break just to make sure that we were assessing what had happened in the fall and making sure that we were making even more improvements for the spring. And so that was a huge emphasis over winter break just to get ready for the spring semester. And I thought that was really refreshing to see um, as a staff member that, you know, I haven't necessarily seen at different institutions. Oh, that's definitely great to hear. Another question that we have here, um, you know, do you have any, um, you know, either you personally or maybe another uh, colleague uh, in your office about maybe a success story, um, you know, from a student, maybe like you kind of said, maybe you didn't really know coming in, um, maybe yeah. it's their senior year and they didn't really know what they were doing. And then by the end of it, they had four different job offers and et cetera that you could share with us. Yeah. Let's see. So I think two come to mind that are really recent within the last week or two. Um, but there was one student who I was working with and he was working on applying to grad school and his dream was to go to Columbia University. Um, and so he didn't even know how to write a personal statement or where to begin with the application process at all. So that was one thing he came to our office. We wrote his personal statement together, reviewed it. Um, and he was a strong student, but just, you know, was kind of unsure. Didn't really know where to begin. And a lot of students are in that situation. So he applied to Columbia. And in the meantime, he thought, maybe I'll just start applying to a couple of jobs, just in the rare case I get one, because he's a senior this year. Um, and a couple of weeks later, he ended up telling me that he actually ended up getting a job offer from a great company in Boston. Um, and he was so surprised that he got one that he didn't know what to do because he was really hoping to get into Columbia. Um, and what had happened is the company gave him a really generous salary. They said, we'll pay your full tuition for grad school. Um, please move to Boston. We'd love to have you. He was a computer engineering student. Um, so he made the difficult decision that he was actually going to turn down his dream of going to Columbia because his company would pay full for his grad school. Um, and now he's attending grad school part time on the side, getting paid with his full time job. Um, so that was a great story. And he reached out and said, thank you for your office. You know, I had no idea where to turn. And, uh, you know, that was really rewarding for me to see that, too. Um, and I, I would say even just yesterday, I met with another student. She had a job offer from KPMG. Um, she had a job offer from a really cool startup, so very two different kind of companies. And then she had another interview that she was on the second round for, and she thought she was going to have a third offer as well. And she was like, I don't know what to do. Please help me navigate this. Uh, so we wrote an email to the company and tried to kind of buy her a little bit more time and things. But, you know, definitely good problems to have. We see this from a lot of Binghamton students, uh, but a tough situation to be in, too, but uh, a good one. No, absolutely. I mean, you hear that with a lot of students, you know, having multiple job offers from Binghamton and, you know, definitely having that leverage is really nice um, to, to kind of, you know, you put yourself in the best situation. You didn't work hard for the last, you know, not only the four years here at Binghamton, but, you know, your whole 18, 21 years, however, however old you're going to be when you graduate, getting to that point and having, you know, that rewarding experience. I know plenty of students who had job opportunities well before they graduated um, Binghamton. So it's just really nice to hear, you know, especially the, the one student, you know, going off to Boston and everything like that. It's really, yeah. really incredible to hear. So now if you had to think 
Oh, and, and, also say, and also, I have to say with Binghamton, it's so impressive every time I hear in this world where everything's a little unsure in the pandemic, Binghamton students are still getting hired for jobs and still finding places to go where sometimes people feel like, oh, I'm graduating, what am I going to do? It's so nice to continue to hear students that have worked hard and are still getting jobs in this, the way the world is now. So it's really a testament to how all the guidance that they're getting from the offices of Binghamton and the academic you know, pathways that they're getting in our school as well. No, absolutely. Yeah, we are, certainly love to talk about the resources that the, that the school has for all of our students, um, whether it be career, you know, the career centers, the um, counseling services, the tutoring, like everything under the sun the university has in order to help our students succeed, because that's what we're here for, right? We want to see you succeed and be a success story here from Binghamton. Now, Kimberly, if you had to think of one piece of advice that you would tell students on what not to do, um, you know, <laughs> in, in the process, you know, what, what, what do you think that might be? Hmm. I would say one thing that we hear from companies a lot is for, of course, they want students to do well academically. And of course, we do too at the college. Um, but I think that what companies recommend that students don't get so fully invested in their academics that they don't do anything outside of the classroom. And so that's something that I think we always really encourage students to do is get involved outside of the classroom. Like I said before, we have so many different Watson student organizations that directly pertain to the major that you want to pursue. So those are great ways to get involved. But even if it's something else, you know, there is, you would probably know better, Doug. I think there's like 300 student organizations on Binghamton's campus. And so even those are great things that employers, even during interviews, want to see that you are passionate about something, that you invest yourself in something that's not just within the classroom, and that you're getting those leadership skills and learning how to work on a team. And those are things that you really need to be able to articulate to get that good job. And that's why I think our students are so successful a lot of the times, because we really do say you have to stop and you have to take time for yourself, get involved, get to know others, get involved outside of the classroom. And that's been really beneficial for our students. No, I definitely agree because, you know, you, you, you're you saying that and, you know, if for those prospective students out there, that's what we look for that too when reviewing our applications, right? So, you know, it's all transferable, whether it be you're applying to college or applying to jobs or anything like that, you know, throughout the different processes, you know, don't forget the different steps that you've taken to get where you are. You know, you can certainly use your experiences to help further yourself, whether it be applying to college or applying for your first internship or full-time job or anything like that. It's all transferable, which is really, really good. Uh, and one more question here for you, Kimberly, before, you know, I might do some just rapid fire Q&A that might be coming in. Um, you know, so you mentioned a couple different networking opportunities, you know, but the engineers week, you know, the, the visiting the different industry, you know, in Washington and Boston, everything like that. What do you think your personal favorite one is that you think, you know, that is mm -hmm. most beneficial or I wouldn't say most beneficial because they're all beneficial. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, maybe one that students enjoy the most, you know, that that give them the most opportunities um, yeah. to kind of explore. Mm -hmm. I would say during non-COVID times, probably the networking night that we do during those industry visits that I mentioned before, um, for example, the one in New York City. So students can sign up, uh, you, you get accepted, you go into the program, then you have multiple different companies that you'll visit with over the course of a couple of days in New York City that are hiring Watson students, of course. So you'll go, you'll get a tour of those companies, you'll speak with lots of different individuals who work there, really get a good feel of the company. And then afterwards at night, everybody goes from all the different majors and we go to this fancy hotel um, and have a really nice hors d'oeuvres hour where everybody's mingling, eating a ton of food, um, you know, going around, bouncing around from table to table, kind of working the room. And we teach you how to do that in advance, that way you feel comfortable. Um, but that event, I think, is something that students look forward to every single year because it's just such a different sort of experience. You get to actually leave the Binghamton University campus, really network with alumni, industry employers, um, and one another at the same time. It's a really cool kind of reception type of feel. So I think that's probably the, the best one. Um, right now, we're doing our best, of course, with the virtual networking. We've had lots of different networking nights on different platforms, and we try to make it as engaging as we can. Um, so, you know, those have been good. We've got good reviews, but we can't wait to just get back in person and start doing the, the real great networking stuff that we've done in the past. No, absolutely. We're all doing what we can, right, in, in these times, but we are certainly looking forward to getting back on campus. As of right now, we are planning to be fully in person again um, for the fall, so we're looking forward to having everyone back on our campus um, with that. So it is 7.30. This was only a half hour presentation. So just to wrap up real quick, um, I'm just going to do some rapid fire Q&As that did come into our Q&A um, functionality. 
Um, first question, does Binghamton or slash Watson only accept students that took every single rigorous course in high school? No, you don't have to take every single rigorous course. We do like to see your, that you're challenging yourself in high school, um, you know, taking the APs, the IBs, the college level classes. It'll certainly help you. We do have a very generous credit allocation here at Binghamton, but you don't need to take every single one. You don't want to stress out too much. As we said, we like to have a well-rounded student, both uh, focusing on inside of the classroom as well as outside of the classroom. Question about chemical engineering, if we have it. Unfortunately, we don't have chemical engineering specifically um, as a major. The five different en uh, engineering majors are biomedical, mechanical, industrial and systems, computer, and electrical. And then we also do have computer science. But we do have a sustainability engineering minor here at Binghamton, which I think is pretty cool. If you didn't know, we were actually ranked number one in sustainability research here at Binghamton. Um, in what years do engineering students usually pursue slash secure internships? Kim, I don't know if you want to touch on this real quick. It's usually probably in their second year or so, but... Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I would agree with, with Doug there. So some of our students as a freshman, they do end up securing internships during their freshman year. Um, if they do, then that's awesome. But definitely during their sophomore year and their junior year are the standard times to complete internships. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. And we have another question here. You know, let's say uh, I'm a Binghamton undergraduate student, uh, have a 3.3 to 3.6 GPA. How is it? How easy is it for me to land a position at a company I'm interested in? Um, with my associated major, how helpful are professors slash other staff with connecting me with future employers? Incredibly helpful. I mean, we have entire offices dedicated to that, regardless of, of your GPA. You know, 3.3 to 3.6 is a fantastic GPA. Um, and, you know, it certainly proved that you've worked hard during your time here at Binghamton. And there's certainly plenty of offices here on our campus, plus professors and contacts and others. But you'll be surprised even your other students that you meet during your time here will come back and you have those opportunities. Everything that you do here at Binghamton is essentially networking. So um, lots of different contacts for you in place to kind of help you secure um you know any internship or full-time job that you're that you're pursuing um and last question here before we wrap up what is the average size of engineering classes um they're pretty small um you know your introductory level classes will be a little larger through our engineering design division probably between 60 and 100 students but as you move through those classes certainly do shrink down to around 20. Our student to faculty ratio here at Binghamton is certainly only 19 to 1. Um, so even though we do have lots of engineering or even though we have a lot of students here at Binghamton, we do have a lot of faculty here as well. So that does wrap up the Q&A. So it is three minutes past, so I don't want to take up any more of anyone's time. Um, so again, thank you so much for everyone who hopped on the call this evening. Thank you, Marlo. Thank you, Kimberly, um, for giving both of your insights. Um, it's always great to hear from all of our offices. Um, and yes, so any admitted students out there, congratulations, put your deposit down. You're not going to regret it. Um, any prospective students out there, um, look out to apply. You know, applications open up August 1st. Um, I saw some students who are juniors now, sophomores um, in high school. So keep Binghamton in mind for all the amazing opportunities that you can certainly have here. Um, any last remarks from either Kimberly or Marla real quick? I think it was perfect. Thanks again for coming. And uh, Kimberly, really, thank you. You were very, very insightful and were very helpful, you know, to be part of a team with other offices. It's really great. So thank you for all of your information as well. Oh, yeah, of course. And students, hopefully I'll see you on campus. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and good luck to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, feel free to reach out with any questions um, to our office. We'll be more than happy to answer them. So with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, and again, uh, thank you so much for attending. So good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.